Welcome to another episode of Pistons of Fury. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to convert a four-cylinder tack to work on a V8. All right, so in this episode, um, what we're going to be doing is taking a Smith's tachometer out of a 1974 MGB um, and that's intended to be for a four-cylinder car. So that's really not going to work with an eight-cylinder in its current state. So step one is I need to take the tack, disassemble it, get all the componentry sorted out. Step two is going to be to modify the tack. And the way we're going to do that is we're basically going to jump two pins on the only circuit on the inside of the tack. And we're going to put a potentiometer or basically a, an adjustable resistor between the two so we can fine tune the, um, the signal that's going, that's coming from the ignition box and going to the tack itself. So once we get that done, we're going to test it on the car, not installed fully. Then we're going to put everything back together. That's step four, I guess. And hopefully everything works and hopefully we can get it all put back together and in the car in this episode. So join me on this journey of awesomeness into tachometer conversion. So here's where we are. Um, as you saw in those last clips, I got my tack disassembled. Um, and now we actually have a resistor uh, bridging the two pins. And I'm actually, I'll go through that process uh, in a little bit um, in, in more detail once I figure out if this works and once I get it fine tuned. So now what I've done is I actually have some um, bridge connectors. So I need power, ground, and signal to go to the tack. And I'm gonna do this all under the engine bay and I'm gonna use my timing light as the actual accurate RPM and see if I can use that potentiometer that we soldered in to fine tune the tack to get it to read correctly. And then once I have it correctly, we can go back, solder it for real, make sure it all fits inside the case and put it inside the car. But I'm doing this all in the engine bay with temporary connectors using alligator clips and, and things like that. So um, yeah, gonna do that, make sure it works and then we'll get around to the final install stuff.
Alright, so what I thought I'd do is just give you guys a little rundown on this tack and how it works. Um, as I mentioned before, this is from a MGB small British company, makes small cars. Um, this is, I believe it's like 72 to 74. This is a model number, let's see, uh, RBC 1410 slash 01. So this specific model, um, you can actually convert to use um, with other size engines other than four cylinder. This is a four cylinder tack, which means it, um, if I remember correctly from everything I've read, it uh, reads the pulse from the engine every 12 milliseconds or about every other stroke. Um, so what we need to do is convert this, or what I've done is converted this so that it reads, let me see if that, if I can remember this right. <laughs> it, it basically just reads double the pulses, right? You have double the cylinder, so it needs to read more frequently. Um, on the back here, you have um, a couple tabs, right? So this guy to the, the chassis of the tack is ground. Um, this here with the yellow on it, that's power. And then this guy here with this cylinder connector is um, signal. And what I've done here is uh, I've just installed this light plug so I can use uh, modern LED light bulbs. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna pop this out and we'll look at what I've done on the inside. So on the inside, um, what we've done is we've added a potentiometer, which um, you've probably seen these like on a guitar amplifier and any knob that you can turn and change volume or bass or treble or whatever, that's a potentiometer that basically varies the resistance in the circuit and it changes the output, right? So what we're looking to do is to, um, well, actually what I've done here is, uh, you probably can't see it, but there's a little chip, a little integrated circuit here, which controls, um, it translates what's coming from the engine and then converts it to basically magnetic output, which is how the coils inside this tack work. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken pin four and pin seven and added a potentiometer between the two. So um, you can actually get a potentiometer that does all this by itself, but we actually have a resistor here and then a potentiometer because we didn't have a, a large enough uh, potentiometer. So we have a 24K resistor and I believe it's around a 50K potentiometer. Um, I'm fortunate to have a dad who is an electrical engineer, so he kind of knows all this uh, intu in intuitively. Intuitively, um, anyway, it's he, he knows it all. I benefit from that, but I'm learning too. I've been learning for a while. Um, so basically, what happens is you bridge this potentiometer in here, and it has an adjustment screw, so you can actually adjust the resistance coming into the tachometer, and that in turn changes the output. Right. So we kind of had it centered when I started up the car, as you probably saw in the video. Um, it was a little bit off; it was a couple hundred RPM off. So I uh, used a small screwdriver, adjusted it, and basically tuned it using that potentiometer varying the resistance and got it to match my Craftsman timing gun. So now the RPMs match the digital gun. I know that's accurate because it's brand new um, and this thing is good to go. So um, yeah, a couple other changes. I painted this instrument needle red just because the rest of my needles are red and my new VDO gauges. Um, and yeah, polished up the glass. The glass in chrome looks fantastic. The size is actually perfect for the stock 1964 to 66 instrument bezel. So it fits right in here. It looks amazing you know, in, in company with these other gauges. And then as far as my uh, mounting solution goes, the outside casing of this tack is actually almost the perfect size to just fit right into this backing plate that I'm using. So um, let me see, I'm gonna put this back in here. That, let that sit over here. So the way I have this set up is um, here's my bezel and then in the center um, I basically came in with a Dremel, cut some slots around here and then folded this in mostly uniformly um, so that that's, the tack slides really really snugly right in here and holds it in place. I don't need any other brackets, it's, it's snug enough. Um, so now I've just got to go back through and fix all the wiring because I took out the other tack. So I've got some new connectors from Ace, so I'm just going to probably throw you guys in time lapse and get on with that.
All right, so that is the end of the episode. Uh, a little bit bittersweet. So as you saw, I got the tack working, verified with my timing light, which has a real digital tack on it. Um, so I know it works. I know the conversion works. I know how to do it. Um, I know how to explain to other people how to do it. So that's all good. The bad thing that happened is I think I shorted out my tack when I was putting the case back together um, and I applied power to it. I think I fried that little integrated circuit chip on the board and it no longer works. When I got everything put back together, it just no response, right? So I took it all apart again, tested it like I did the first time and still nothing, it was kind of dead. Um, so my dad's actually taking a look at that, kind of running through it, seeing if there's anything we can do to salvage that. In the meantime, I've actually ordered another one off eBay. It's just another 50 bucks, that's how these things go. Um, so I will have that modified for the next episode. I also got my sending units um, while I was in the middle of, you know, kind of putting this episode together. So they will be in the next episode. So next episode, um, gauge pod done, installed, interior of the car, good to go, driving, registering, all that stuff. Um, yeah, so a little bit bittersweet, like I said, it kind of sucks, it didn't work and I wasn't able to fully finish the install this week, but that's just how these things go. Um, thanks for watching, like the video, subscribe to the channel, we're almost done, we're almost driving, I know I keep saying that, but it's for real this time, I swear. Uh, thanks a lot and I'll see you next week.